Welcome to On Fire, episode 7 of Old Man's Land, a Farming Simulator 19 gameplay by Service Farm. Today's plan is to sell the silage, harvest the soy in our field number 3, if it's ready, produce more silage, and set the farm on fire. Not all did go quite as planned. Good morning, old man's land. Today is Sunday, early autumn or fall, depending on where in the world you are. Today's weather is supposed to get up to 21 degrees, cloudy or overcast, but no rain in the forecast. Have a wonderful day. If it's ready to harvest our soy, no, it's not ready. So we are not going to be able to harvest today. So we're going to be doing a lot of silage. Let's see if we can also cut additional grass to fill our silage bunker again. And other than that, we can spend some time mapping out, planning out how we are doing the fields in our new piece of land, how we are using that, how we are planning on that. And I also want to look into, can we get chicken? What would we need to feed them, to water them, uh, where could we put them? Just mapping out a little bit where we can go there. I have a feeling that we should be able to actually afford chicken, to be able to put chicken somewhere and start generating additional income there. So uh, let's map out the future or the nearer term future of the farm and then go from there. I want to try something out instead of always moving in there and forward. Yeah, that sounds like a. I just had me had had a thought on how this whole loading of the silo could be done a little bit easier. So I want to try that. Let's see if this works. For that, we're going to be pulling the trailers in this way. If we're not getting stuck at the corner. pulling in here. That actually works nice. In other news, it's been a few days since I recorded. You guys have completely blown me away. I did a rebranding of my previous videos and re-uploaded them and the channel has already grown to 25 subscribers. This is something I had not expected at all at this stage. So that is tremendously appreciated and you guys are awesome. So we're really happy about that. Thank you very much. And let's see where this journey goes. Distracted driving. I also have something prepared that we kind of talked about in the past episodes. So we're going to be building a deck or a porch, some sitting area, barbecue area, where our farmer can spend his evening outside enjoying the view on the lake and we still need a name for our farmer just calling him our farmer is not appropriate we should come up with a name i 
I assume that uh, the second silage bunker is going to be taking until this evening to be fermented because we covered it late last night so it's probably going to be taking a full 24 hours so I don't expect that we're going to be emptying the second one today depending on the time we might get one perhaps two loads to the shop but I don't have expectation it to be much more that And while we're going to be doing our future planning for chicken and so on, we actually also need to look into crop rotation to ensure that we're getting the maximum out of our fields or close to the maximum out of our fields. We will need to optimize for that. Somehow this farming is always a hunt for more money. this is running I actually want to check one thing is it in here no because I actually have a mod installed for where would that be hmm I don't it's in here Nope. Corn headers. Why is it not in here? It's not a header. Ah, it's in here. That's not where it's supposed to be. That's 41,000 euros for... That doesn't make sense doesn't harvest corn, it actually makes chaff out of corn. That would be an interesting approach. Planting corn and making chaff out of it for a bunker silo. I wonder if that brings more money than harvesting corn. That's actually a nice glitch in the bunker silo. Also, I want to remind on the Easter egg hunt. So far, nobody has called out any of the Easter eggs that I have hidden in the map. I know where they are, so I have seen, I know that in the materials you can see, or at least glimpse, four of the Easter eggs. Two are pretty obvious, the other two not so much, but so far nobody has called them out. I want to do a quick reminder on the Easter egg hunt. If you see them, put a comment into the under the video, call out either the video time or the daytime, oh, preferably, preferably, probably, preferably actually the daytime, in-game in daytime, when you are seeing, or when you think that you have seen an easter egg, where on the screen it is, as well as what you think it is. If you're right, and if you're the first one, I'm going to be adding your name to the playlist as having discovered the easter egg or the first one being the first one having discovered the easter egg <coughs> there are several around i'm not going to be saying how many as long as i'm not stating that all have been found there are more around Now that this is going to be definitely the last part, the last bit, I'm going to collect 
the milling machine at the same time. Second rail is empty, so we leave him here. Just need to quickly note down. Just need to quickly note down how much we actually did get from our silage. Sixteen five five two. Sixteen and a half thousand euros from this one bunker. That is actually quite a lot. was just looking around the tractor cabin. Let's get the mower and get the grass mowing. And for that we need to first check what we're going to be mowing. I can see it's fully grown here, but where else? So, let's check here, growth, grass. Okay, so it's fully grown back here, around here. It's just starting to grow here. We're just starting to get ready to harvest here, but not up here, up here, okay. So, let's get at it. You probably have guessed on my comment that, or my construct, that our farmer is a former Twitter employee that I'm actually working in the technology sector, at least now. So you have guessed right with that. And no, I have not worked for Twitter. I know folks that worked for Twitter, that work for Twitter, but myself not worked for Twitter. So I'm not affected by the changes there. I'm working in a consultancy and we are relatively big in technology and what I do there, I'm working as a data scientist, a consultant in data science and machine learning as well as holding a management position actually within the firm. So it's a double role that I have there. So yes, I know and I've got a pretty good insight what is going on in the technology sector. I'm not going to be going into details here, but let's put it this way. I have my contacts, I have my insights, I have my insider information, partially, and yes, I have worked for companies 
better known companies, let's put it this way, like the Googles and Microsoft, T-Mobile, I'm not going to be naming all of them, a few better knowns. Actually, earlier today I read an article, and in this article they're kind of starting to, or stating that everybody working in this kind of field, data science, machine learning and so on, is now an AI engineer, and they are in a specialization like data science or machine learning, which is, in my opinion, complete bogus. You don't need to over-market this AI expression. It's over-marketed already. It's overhyped, in my opinion, and far too much is labeled as AI. It actually has nothing to do with AI. And actually, funnily enough, it's not entirely wrong to market it like that, out of a very simple reason. It's marketed as AI, and what AI is, or what can be marketed as AI, is not defined. Not even what is considered AI, as in artificial intelligence. What actually is it? How do you define it? It is not there. There is no universally acceptable or universally accepted definition. So it is an expression, and everybody can use expressions for marketing. So if you're looking at it under that lens, you can market whatever you like AI. And right now, far too much is being marketed as AI. That is has nothing to do with artificial intelligence, at least in my opinion. And I'm basing this on how do you define intelligence, not artificial intelligence, intelligence by itself, just intelligence. How do you define that? And it's already difficult to come up with a consensus for what is intelligence. So how do you want to have consensus for artificial intelligence, which is a special form, subform of intelligence, if you can't even define the wider field? In my opinion, what intelligence is, what intelligence should be looked at, is being able to come to conclusions based on deduction and transferring abstract knowledge from one topic to another and make decisions based on that and being able to foresee what the implications of these decisions are. That is how I would be looking at intelligence and to specifically includes, for example, animals. It's possible for animals, for dogs, for example, or cats, birds, to learn, to abstract, to transfer knowledge the learned to new environments. And most methods are actually, at this time, methods used in machine learning are trained on data that is very specific, very specialized, very defined, very narrow. And what these machine learning algorithms actually do is they can predict the most likely outcome on data they haven't seen. That's not the magic. Where the magic actually comes in, they are trained with always very large amounts of data to be specialized for a very specific task. So if you have a machine learning algorithm that is trained, uh, what do I take for an example? If you take a machine learning algorithm, for example, let's say you're using a machine learning algorithm to and train it to predict stock price, just like getting it some. So if you train a machine learning algorithm to predict the stock price, for example, for Google, on Wall Street Stock Exchange, this machine learning algorithm might be doing more or less well predicting stock prices for a bank in Frankfurt or London. But that's not what it was trained to do. There are specifics that are not included in the training data. So it is not trained properly to do this. You can transfer learn it, optimize it further, fine tune it further for that different stock price. But out of the box, it's not going to be doing very well, simply because it's not designed to do that task. It's not trained to do that task. And what a machine learning algorithm actually does 
Now what the magic of machine learning algorithm is, it goes and adjusts itself to the data. It is a computer algorithm of silage in here. What the heck is going on? Where is the silage in here? here and I can open the silo over here. What the heck is going on here? Anybody seen something like this? is a weird Okay, now 
I got myself into a pickle. There's no a silage in here. Okay. Let me have a look here. right now out of them out of them actually just going getting the grass and dumping it right beside the silo or the bunker and once we are emptying the other bunker transferring the grass in that's the only thing I can think of if it is glitching out like this I haven't seen that before Makes for an interesting day. I have turn side, uh, turn side, yeah, turn. I have tip side left. So this overhyping, this overusage of AI does not stop, even in farming simulator. There are now the AI helpers. It's not just helpers anymore, it's AI helpers. Is it through AI? Can they learn from the mistakes? Have you ever noticed that when you have an helper or if you're employing helpers, they're getting stuck on certain areas, they keep getting stuck there, they're not making decisions, they're not making the doctrines, they're not learning from it. So they're not even improving, they're not changing. So that's not intelligent in general terms. So it's not AI, at least AI in a proper, narrow, philosophical definition. In marketing, it's perfectly fine. So 
And it's the same everywhere. Everybody these days claims they have AI in their stuff. You even get toothbrushes with AI in it. And I'm not talking about uh, microbes in the toothbrush themselves. I'm talking about the handle that has the motor. Don't get me wrong, machine learning is a terrific desktop and there is a lot of value to it. Otherwise nobody would be spent the absurd amount of money that are being spent in that area. They de machine learning definitely can help and is helping, absolutely no doubt about that, in optimizing a lot. These approaches are, after all, built to use data for creating predictions. They're using past data for creating predictions without trying to understand and without trying to interpret the data, what it means. There is no MBA in there that tells the algorithm how marketing has to work, how the markets flow, how people are behaving, or what they learned, how it actually is. It is simply a bunch of data, an algorithm that looks at the data, is trained on the data, and optimizes for a certain certain type of types of outcome. That's what it does. It's not distracted by our human interpretation, our human understanding. It's not limited by the amount of data that you actually can throw at it. If you have to compute resources, then you can throw a lot of data at it. I have built pipelines and run data in the hundreds of billions of rows. Not millions, billions of rows. And that is a lot of data. Try understanding that or make that graspable for you. And you can't. Even the size of the data is hard to understand for, for the human mind. Completely not even considering trying to make sense of it. Just going to be parking the trailers in here for now. And the metal bike here. The two things that I want to look at is. Well, let's set up I experimented already with this let's set up our rotation crop rotation so we have canola wheat grass soybean barley and soybean again Let's do this. What happens if we're putting corn in here? Or in here? That actually goes down at barley. Corn reduces the wheat here. Okay, let's, swap. let's keep soybeans in here. For the small field, I don't know yet if I want to use corn there. Yeah, let's do that. 
So we have our crop rotation. And we need to look into where we are putting our additional fields. Let's turn off grass so that we actually can see and zoom in here a bit. So we have those rocks in here. We are using this as the path up. If I actually can grow, then you can see it, how it's coming up here. There's a couple trees in there. So what I'm going to be doing is Let's just do one big field. We're not going to be going with too many crops. So we don't need too many crops at the same time. So let's go make this a big field. Go here, from up here, go over here. Make this one big field. Then we can keep this down here for now, for grass for silage and up here here's our road that keeps going through we keep going with that road through all the way down up here so this is going to be one field over here and this one is going to be one so we can take that and actually go to the street here and this one we are keeping to the street to here Let's do that, yes. So we have one, two, three, and then this one here is number, uh, actually number one, number two, number three. This is going to be number four. Number one is going to be growing here. Let's do this. And we can also Check our animal pens for chicken. So there's a chicken coop in here. Let's check if yes, alien gym for 500 chicken, antique sweet and barley. This also takes wheat and barley, so we can have both of them. Barley is cheaper than wheat. Huh. So we need to. So let's check if we're putting it up here. Yeah, that perfectly works. Let's have a look in the extension of the road. Yeah, that works nicely. Maybe we could put it back here. Hmm. We need to see where we put it. Yeah. Or here. Not building it yet. With this, let's get our subsoiler to lay out the field, the parameter of the field. And before we do that, I expect our silage to be ready later today. So let's quickly check where we are at 82%. Yeah, it's going to be taking some more time. Can we get past the tree? Yes, easy. That is something I would like to see in the forestry part of farming simulator, that you actually have to dig out the uh, tree stumps, but that would be relatively tedious. But on the other side, you actually could dig out the tree stumps instead of grinding them off and then using them additionally to make wood chips. So that would be some. Going 
go in here for eagle eye. Consider where I'm coming over from here. So let's have a look at that. So here is where the path is coming up. So we'll be somewhere behind this tree. We keep those here. So let's see how this is working. And yes, our tools are getting smaller for the for these fields. Which is fine. Just takes more time. Can I get past? Yes. There's the road. All the way. Don't quite go up. Can move that a little bit down. Okay. So let's go a little bit further south here. Just this edge. Not much, a little bit. the rocks so let's go closer to the rocks to be cutting these two out that's fine it's not too steep let's stay a little bit off those rocks just like that Okay, that was number one, field number one. On to field number four, future field number four. The dog has an opinion. I don't think I can get past that one. Good. Goodish enoughish. It looks goodish enoughish. So let's go with it. This one here, we're going up from the south. Because we have to try the tree here, so we're just taking this one and go straight in for now. There you go. All laid out. It's four o'clock. Let's check where we are with our silage.
88 was up there. Okay. What was that? Damage, 0%. But it needs repair. Okay. Now, the other thing what I wanted to do today is finally building a and we need to turn this why does do you collide with an object i can put you right here here you go nice launch chairs and we can put our barbecue on fire it is on fire look at that Perfect. And then also lights. Hey Pepper. Hey Pepper. Let's feed you while we're here. There you go. Now if it would just be able to actually sit in here. Okay. Now what we should do. Get our climbing crutch that we can get into the first story of our windmill. And then actually, there you go. With that, we probably should actually get prepared to load our silage now I'm gonna come in from the back here to actually see if we can't empty this one first that's going to suck because we're going to be losing quite a bit of our grass here Overnight. So uh, let's plan out. We have 31,000 31, euro. We need 10,000 for our. We need 10,000 for our chicken pen. What do we? We can keep. We can feed the barley. So we can sell the wheat. It's 14,000. We are selling that at about 700. So that is 10,500. Then we. Close to 11,000. Oh, we sell that for 11,000, so that's 12,000. So we are at 22,5. We have canola, 25,000 canola that we sell for 12,70, 12,50. So that's 25, 31,000. So that's together 53,000. That is quite a bit. And then we have the silage in here. If memory serves right, it was about 260,000, 207,000. Selling at the moment uh, 100, 100, yes. So that's another 27,000 in there. That is probably not going to be that much. So let's just neglect that for now. So we're looking at uh, 53,000, 27,000. Yeah, that gets us to 80,000 with the trees that we're going to be cutting down i would expect that we're going to be able to actually afford another piece of this winter so that is terrific news the other thing what i actually wanted to check is yeah you will feel 20 you're not going to be for the specific for the economic okay where are we at 90%? 91. Yeah, I need to see that I can fix this silo here. This bunker. What else do we need to do today? I haven't told you anything about Julie. And you are probably wondering how the truck teleported here. Because we left it at the uh, 
store when we bought the harvester. And now it's here. That is a good observation. So how that all happened is actually very simple. Julie came last week under the pretense to update what we did, what she found out or what the police found out in the valley next door. Well, next door, in the valley one over. And they are certain uh, arson. I don't know much more than that yet. It looks oddly suspicious, but they don't know yet any more detail. Just that night idea. Let me go over there. Just that night idea. Let me go over there. So they don't know any more details. But to use that as a pretty pretense to actually come over. So our farmer has high hopes there. And I'm going over here because we're going to be cutting down all these trees to create our field and quite a number over there. And I mentioned that at the beginning. If I'm cutting down trees, I want to replace them with a approximately equal amount of trees. So I'm going to be filling in this one here. We don't need that roadway anymore. Now that we have our own extension of the main road. So yes, her farmer thinks that Julie is also curious about him and something in her utterly fascinating. There is something melancholic about her, not in a bad way, just sometimes you just feel that with people if they had bad luck or misfortune thrown their way, you just can't feel it. And that's kind of what my dog thinks. Like our dogs are smooth about each other. It's getting towards spring and nature is calling. And not that there is any actual hope for them to create offspring. For the dogs that is. They're both fixed. But it is what it is. So let's see where So let's see where we are at. We're cutting it close, it's getting late. Let's have a look at our porch from over here. Ooh, I can't see that much of it. Wetting our pants in the lake. That's going to be the title for the... That's going to be the title for this episode, On Fire. Yes. Let's do that. On fire. We are on fire. That's the title. Let's repair the tractor and uh, trailers. Let's use the time by spending money. Repair five bucks. Yes. Repair. You are a little bit more expensive. The small little trail back there is really impressing me. It's not that expensive to run. We also can add more trailers, hook up more trailers to it. So we might want to consider that as well. The 
this is really odd. Can you actually put that down? No. I guess next piece of land that we would be buying would be this one here, number 27. And this one is just extending field number four up here. We would actually need two and then there is additional stuff. 27 we can extend to field two and three and also have this one here. Is it worth starting something else? This field does not need plowing. I could start cutting the trees. There you go. Let's see. 97. No, I don't want to cut those because I want to get the grass. I can't cut down the trees. I'm just going to be laying in the way. I probably should go the other way that I can easily pull them down. percent yes that definitely looks like a storm steve came past here that's opening it up quite a bit come on there now it was nearly perfect timing is really creating some dramatic last minute tension here. We're going to be running out of daylight very soon. And 288,000. Okay, so let's see if we can get anything out of it here. We're actually able to get side out. Fill 
Okay. Let's fix this. Okay, so now that we have it open, we can empty what it thinks is in this bunker. We already are out of daylight. You know what? I want to fix this anchor silo and see if I can move the grass over. Just setting the flip side again. Mist it. I need a mist it counter. How often am I able to fully frontally miss it a day? Oops, that again. See if I can adjust using the milling machine move the grass over that I don't need to put it into the trailers.
It's on fire. Problem solved. Thanks for sticking with me. Uh, you have a subscribe button right now coming up on your screen. I would appreciate it if you would subscribe and check back for the next episode. This is episode 7 on fire of Old Man's Land, a farming simulator 19 gameplay by Savis Farm. Over and out. Peace.